Welcome to Website and TV, I'm Gemma Houghton. Today I'm here with Jana Bracchetti Driscava, who's the International SEO Manager at Bold Ventures, and we're going to be talking about website relaunching and how to make sure it goes well. Hi Jana, thanks for being here. Hi, thank you. So firstly, why, what are some of the reasons why you would even be relaunching a website? Why does that sometimes happen? Well, there can be multiple reasons. So the main reasons I have seen, which should not be a reason, um, my clients are, oh, it just feels plain old. We need something else. We need something fresher. And they just do it like they, they change everything entirely, like the looks, um, the URL structure, etc., etc., which is always a hassle. So there's always something going wrong. And if you do too many things all at once, you never know what is actually the thing that went wrong. And there's always something going wrong, especially if there's no SEO involved. Mm -hmm. So that should not, shouldn't be the reason. The reason should be you, you think your website is not, for example, you've got a shop and the product detail pages do not have as many conversions as they should have. So they're not generating as much traffic, they're not generating uh, as much revenue, and then you try to think it over. But then you should actually, well, you shouldn't change too many things at once, even, not even with redesign, because you never know what part of the redesign mm. has been the part that has that is working well or that's not working at all. So yeah. you should do it in bits and parts. Um, so just step by step, but people rarely do it. Um, the reasons why you should do it, um, but not all at once, obviously, could be, well, I named it already, like conversions are not so well, so you try mm -hmm. to improve that. Um, or sometimes it's rebranding yep. could also be the case. Or um, you figure out that an issue is the, the URL structure, for example, SEO-wise. Mm -hmm. So you, you can't be crawled well or the URL structure is just hard for, um, to be Im implemented and watched in analytics or mm -hmm. whatever. So it could make sense to, to make that better as well. Um, or you move to HTTPS, mm -hmm. which is an issue as well. And many websites have done it already. Some still have to do it. So And eventually there's, I think, no way to avoid going yeah. HTTPS. So that is also a relaunch, but you should not combine this with redesign, for example. Yeah. Um, or you want to get rid of some content. Maybe mm -hmm. you have like old flash games yeah. and you want to get rid of that and either you, you kill them entirely or you provide different content mm -hmm. instead and doing some redirection. But it really depa it depends on what the goal is, what you want to achieve. So it depends on your KPI. If you think traffic is an issue, organic traffic especially, um, mm -hmm. and you want to improve that and you figure out, so first you have to figure out why is it not the way we want it to be? So usually there is an issue. It's not mm -hmm. like, oh, everything's fine. You know yeah, what people we've say? We've got nothing to do today, mm -hmm. so we'll relaunch the website. So yeah. you, you know what people say? It's like never change a running system. Mm -hmm. So if everything is working well, then you should try to improve otherwise, like on, on other marketing channels, yeah. obviously. But usually there's always something you can improve and that is when you can do a relaunch. Yeah. So what should you be putting in place as the starting point if you're going to do this? Obviously identify what it is that you're trying to achieve with it is the first, but what other steps need to be in, done in the planning phase to kind of minimise the risk of failure or mistakes? Well, what I've seen, the main, main two points why relaunches are failing and which have to be avoided then to make sure it's going smoothly is first, I already mentioned it, but you can't mention it often enough, is um, not doing everything all at once. Mm -hmm. Doing testing, like I, I rarely see people testing the websites. Um, like, I mean, you can easily do some A-B tests on different things before you actually change them. Um, and second one is, and that is very important, people got their processes wrong. So they leave important people out of the process especially yeah. SEO people. Yeah. So usually they're sitting around in somewhere in the basement, the SEO basement. And especially if people are working um, according to the Scrum principle. Mm -hmm. So you got the developer team and the product owner and um, the Scrum master. They're working together and there are stakeholders, for example, let's say the sales department, and they mm -hmm. want to have something changed. So they make a ticket and they're communicating back and forth with the product owner. And once what they want to have done is done. They actually um, have another look at the ticket and, s and define whether or not that's what they wanted to have and whether it's okay to be deployed. And 
they leave out the SEO per person entirely. Yeah. And so something, what often happens is like a uh, sales department wants to have big pop-up thing on the website, like yeah. covering all content entirely because they are a publisher, they're selling this to their clients, whatever. And the SEO only ever realizes it when things Traffic are just starts really... to drop. Yeah. Yep. And then they got to do troubleshooting and everybody's really angry because they have to roll it back mm. and look for different solutions. And it makes the whole thing very expensive because all people are working on it. And usually SEOs are not really famous in the scrum teams then. So they, just, they just see them as an enemy. Yeah. So what you have to do instead is, you, for example, what goes wrong in processes is first of all, SEO is not really involved and they should be. Mm -hmm. So what you can do, make sure, for example, when you use a ticket system, that there's kind of a definition of done. So things you have to, boxes you have to tick before you can really deploy. Yeah. And in those boxes, there have to be SEO issues that could come up. For example, is the HTTP status code changing when you roll out? If so, the ticket has to go to the SEO first. Or is the canonical changing? The age of flank mm -hmm. changing? Is the robots txt changing? And whenever there are changes, the yeah. SEO has to look at it before it can be deployed. So it's really developing robust processes that everybody understands and that everybody follows to avoid problems. Exactly. And it also involves that the, the role of the SEO person has to be defined in a different way. Basically, you just have to give it names. Yeah. Like if you don't give it another name, things won't change that much. But if you call them, for example, subject matter expert, mm. then all of a sudden <laughs> you have this role because the SEO can also be a stakeholder. They can say, oh, we want to improve something, mm -hmm. for example, internal linkage. Yeah. So they make a project, they make a ticket. That's when they get communicated with mm. the PO, but otherwise they won't. But if you call them subject matter expert, they know they have or can consult you you know, as an, as an expert on those things. So it's a lot about education as well, helping people understand yes. the roles and what actually different job functions do and the benefit exactly. you know, to them of, of consulting. Exactly. And I would say that is the basis mm. So for, for, for working on, on relaunches or on anything. Yeah. And then obviously you need proper monitoring. Mm -hmm. So you need to make sure that Google Analytics or whatever analytics tool you're using is working fine, that the tracking is really done properly so that the data you have is actually valid and you mm -hmm. can work with it. Um, I would suggest making a crawl on the um, test environment mm -hmm. before you roll out yeah. and then another one after. Mm -hmm. And you should use probably a, like a really good crawler that can just cover much. Obviously, you can do it by hand with Screaming Frog, mm -hmm. but it can be a hassle to actually compare two crawls. What you could do instead, you could use Audisto or Botify. So they are really, um, really powerful crawlers. And then you can compare. Actually, they, those tools can do it for mm -hmm. you, like comparing those two crawls. So you can easily spot what has gone wrong or what has improved. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, so for monitoring, you should also look into Search Console, obviously, so that everybody, everything is indexed well and that there are no changes. You should monitor rankings, but first, because Rankings start dropping usually a bit, a bit later. Yeah. So things happen. F so you should actually spot the issues before that happens. Mm. Um, and that's if why you're doing you it thoroughly yeah. testing and actually checking. If exactly. Also, you should make sure because I realize that many people are getting this wrong. You need server logs because let's say for some reason you can't make any sense out of the data from analytics or you forgot the crawl or you deleted it or whatever. You need the server logs mm. to see if Googlebot is crawling the site differently than before, etc. And you need to make sure that the retention time of the server logs is long enough. To really get a good so, picture. Yeah. yeah, because I've been there. I, I, had, I had a relaunch happening four weeks before I started working with a client and I was asking for server logs and they, they were like, well, we got just retention time of one week. It's like, oh, okay. It doesn't I'm, tell you a great deal. <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so there's a lot to think about. And then when you're yeah. doing it on an international website with perhaps lots of different subdomains or folders and different languages, that adds extra challenges. Is there anything to particularly bear in mind specifically when you're working on the international? It depends on whether or not you have already been international or not. Mm. So if you internationalize, so then usually that means you have to um, 
either get additional domains, mm -hmm. like the, the additional CCTLDs for each country, like yeah. .fr, .de, etc. Or um, you had those already and you want to actually combine them for, uh, on a GTLD, like .com. Yeah. Um, so whenever you change something with domains, that is always what I call it fuck up potential. So it bears some kind of potential mm. um, because well, people forget redirects or the structure, the URL structure was really bad before and mm -hmm. doing redirection properly is hard to do afterwards, stuff like that. So that's always an issue or combining it with moving to HTTPS mm -hmm. or other, other issues. That is something you have to think about, but as well, um, you have to think about your content. So it begins with the brand. If you think your brand is working in every country, working well in every country, might be the case, but you might also fail entirely. So we've seen this with a lot of, um, um, oh, what's the name for that in English? Um, we've seen this with a lot of brands who actually make cars. So they had nice new brand names for a new car, and in another country that meant something that meant something really, like with a negative yeah. connotation. They were not aware of that, and so it wasn't selling well. Mm. And then. When you have that within your relaunch and you think, oh yeah, we're going, we're going Spain and we call our car Roto, well, that means it's actually not working. <laughs> so yeah. that's not a good thing. No. It's, it's really not a good thing. So um, you have to think about that first. And also localization is an issue. So if you have not done this properly or not at all, it doesn't matter if the relaunch has been done fine technically if the content is not in the in the target language mm. it's not working well yeah so so there's a lot of th that is actually a big big issue um, we come across a lot of times and people think oh yeah we have like especially for online shops you've got like 3,000 products mm. and you want to go international and you want to go to France tomorrow and you need all those texts translated yeah. so doing human translation is quite expensive then mm. even with nowadays dumping prices so then they think oh we just do google translate nobody's gonna notice and me having been a technical translator before that is really hurting yeah but as well how can you how can you think that those product descriptions are working well conversion wise yeah. how are they going con to convince a user in France to buy a product. Yeah, if you'd be better to translate 10 manually, but do them really well than have 3000 that are bad because. Yeah, that's people. exactly what I'm suggesting. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's an issue where people forget this, especially during relaunches. Mm. They think, oh, we did the hreflang thing uh, for multilingual targeting and we did the .fr dom domain and should be fine now, etc. And yeah, it's not. Like if you got English text and people are well, it might come as a surprise, but people in France are using Google usually with French queries. <laughs> like, huh. Yeah. 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 So it's not just, it's the bigger picture. It's not just the technical element of the relaunch. Exactly. It's the whole international strategy that really needs to be thought about. Yeah, exactly. But then again, if you relaunch in France, let's say you go to France, and even if you had your descriptions translated, if there's no customer service, you can speak French or even English, this can mm. also be an issue and people don't think about this or like legal documents, like yeah. for example, terms and conditions, you really have to translate them. Otherwise you get in really serious issues and people forget that. Well, if you basically that is not SEO really, yep. but on the other hand, you're driving traffic to the website yep. through SEO. So you have to think about it is going to, it's going to ultimately affect the performance of the SEO yep. because exactly. And that's where also the problems can come because you get people within the organization who don't fully comprehend that who then say well it's because SEO doesn't work and we're not doing that anymore it's yeah not really the reason exactly so like you said at the start there are always going to be there are so many things that can go wrong and it's very likely that you know it's also very unlikely that a, a, a relaunch will go fully smoothly with nothing so how do you react when you do see a change and how do you ensure that this doesn't have a, a long-term or even short-term negative impact on performance well first of all if you see a negative change it's usually best to just, well, there are three steps you could do first be, to make sure it's really been the relaunch and that, that has an issue. And there's really a technical issue you have to do a deep dive for. Mm. So one of the steps is, has there just been a change in the robots.txt? 
because if it has, it just if just all bots have been disallowed, this can happen. That might mean everything else might just be fine, but the robots, the, you know, the Google bot, mm. the Bing bot, etc., have been disallowed to crawl your site. So that's easy to fix. So mm. first of all, you check for things that are easy to fix. Is that an issue? If it's not, has the tracking pixel disappeared? I've seen that happening. Oh, there's mm. no traffic. There's no traffic. There was. You yeah. could see it in the server logs, but if you had them. But <laughs> the tracking <laughs> pixel just disappeared. They forgot to move it. The point is, um, has the test environment been indexed? Sometimes that happens during a relaunch, mm. and then for some reason, all the traffic is going there. Yeah. That shouldn't happen, so you have to check this as well. And if this, all of this is not the case, then you need the deep dive. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you have to do is define how bad it is really and think about what you can do in the meantime. So obviously, for a deep analysis, you need to get yourself some time mm -hmm. and space. And you don't get space if your boss is coming to your office every half an hour and saying, we are losing money, we're losing money, do something now. <laughs> and interrupting you. And those things happen. Yeah. So, first of all, how did you, how did you see that the relaunch is going mm. bad? So if it's about traffic or revenue or both, mm. it can be very bad. So what you can do instead, just roll back the thing and then do your analysis on the test environment mm -hmm. where everything is still back to where it was before. Some, sometimes that might not be possible. Sometimes people say, oh, it's not possible technically. I can't imagine why or how, but sometimes they just claim that. Or if you're working with a client and they're not having their own devs, so it has been done by another agency, it, yeah. might, be, it might be too expensive. They don't want to have it rolled back. Mm. So in that case, you still need to create some time and space for yourself. And you can do that by, for example, moving to traffic acquisition, like, for example, doing AdWords or other PPC campaigns. Mm. You will still lose revenue. But maybe it helps a bit. Balance you have to do some out. calculations mm. on that first, but it helps to ease that just a bit mm -hmm. to give you more time to do your analysis. And then you have to look into, well, for example, what kind of relaunch did you have? Was it a redesign? Then, you know, each type of relaunch um, has different typical issues. Mm. So, for example, on redesign, it could be internal linkage because you think, oh, we need to get rid of that nasty sidebar, mm. but we don't provide anything else to keep those internal links. Yeah. Or, I don't know, um, or it's not, you know, you do, did the redesign, but you thought it would be a good idea to have everything loaded with Ajax, but you made some mistakes mm. and now Google can't see anything really. Those things happen as well. Um, if it's anything with your domain structure that your or URL structure that you're changing and you forgot the redirects, all the redirects are going to the home page. Yeah. You know, so what I did, for example, is I made um like just a Google spreadsheet and I named each type of relaunch and then the typical issues that can happen and also named where you could actually look if that was an issue. Mm. Um so Having yeah. some kind of yeah checklist and a process to go through to make sure exactly. that, so that you don't just panic because that can imagine be this everybody's running around like you say everyone's coming in yes. ah this is yes. happening you need to just take a step back and go through it exactly and, yeah exactly and so it always helps to have some some kind of checklist and then just go through it thoroughly but before you go through the checklist you have to define what is the thing that could possibly hurt the most mm -hmm. for example redirects that are missing and then you check those things first and then you make like a bug list and you prioritize and then and you don't wait until you're done with your analysis when you spotted an issue you just go to the devs straight you know straight to the devs and have them um yeah work on it immediately so you eliminate yeah. the, the worst bugs first obviously great well i think there's a lot of very useful tips and insights there thank you very much for so. sharing that today thank thanks you. <laughs>